Hello friends, welcome to another Agents of Deterioration video. Man, we are really flying through these. Today we're talking about pollutants. Pollutants is a very large umbrella word for what we're going to be getting into because pollutants covers things such as like gases, liquids, aerosols, particles, dust, you name it. Anything that can have a chemical reaction with an object is a pollutant. Under this umbrella term, we have three different categories. Airborne pollutants, pollutants transferred by contact, and intrinsic pollutants. Airborne pollutants can be anything from the atmosphere. So think of ozone, hydrogen sulfide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, or even particles like soot and salt that can get into the air. Then we have airborne pollutants that can come from people or machines or anything that will emit gases, which could be organic gases, organic bases, or more sulfurous gases. There's a bunch of examples of airborne pollutants so as not to bore you or you know make this video 85 minutes long I'll only go into a few of them just remember to look into this more if you're concerned about your objects environment actually just remember to look into pollutants more because this one involves a lot of chemistry and it definitely needs more attention if you're planning to work in archaeological collections or work in a museum so for the first one let's talk about acetic acid acetic acid happens mostly indoors and it comes from things like a acidic wood display cases. Over time, they'll start to emit this acid and materials such as lead can be highly susceptible to it. Lead starts to degrade super fast when in contact with acetic acid. Another airborne pollutant is hydrogen sulfide, which is very easy to identify because it smells like farts. Yep, that rotten egg smell is a gas that can be quite the pollutant. This stuff can tarnish silver, it can tarnish gold, and it can even darken lead white pigments in paintings. And I'll give you one guess as to where a lot of this gas comes from when you're inside a building. People. Yep. We are gassy as heck. And now I have cursed you all with the knowledge that every time you pass wind in a museum, you may be contributing to object degradation. You're welcome. Fine particles like dust can also be very dangerous to collections. These particles can be of various microscopic sizes, but the smaller the particle, the harder it is to protect against or get rid of. Other examples of particles could be salts, particles that form crusts, sulfate compounds, all the stuff that floats around in the air. Fine particles can settle on objects and discolor the surface. The more porous the surface, the harder it is to clean out those particles because they like to get into all those little nooks and crannies. Some particles can be oily or metallic, which can also really speed up deterioration because some things don't react well to these materials. Oily particles are also very sticky and even more particles will attach themselves and create even more nastiness to deal with. Water vapor is also an airborne pollutant and it can cause both physical and chemical damage. As we learned when we talked about water as an agent of deterioration, some materials don't like to be wet. Even though water vapor isn't full on water, if there's enough of it that lingers, it can really start to affect sensitive materials. Then of course, there's the chemical damage that can occur, like the formation of mold and bacteria. Moisture from your breath when you are speaking moistly can send water vapor onto materials and just wreak havoc. Speaking, uh moistly on them. Oh, what a terrible image. That's why they started limiting the amount of people to see cave paintings in France. Too many people were going in, speaking moistly or breathing heavily, and creating a very humid environment that is detrimental to the conservation of those prehistoric works of art. Oxygen, surprisingly enough, is also an airborne pollutant that we can't really do anything about because we can't live without it. So this is one that we just have to live with but luckily it's not a key pollutant or one that is extremely dangerous. Oxygen helps with the breakdown of organic materials and adding oxygen into a chemical process can really speed up the degradation processes of, for example, rusting of iron or the tarnishing of silver. So that's enough of the airborne pollutants. Let's get into the next one, which is pollutants transferred by contact. Pollutants transferred by contact are introduced by materials with potentially harmful components coming into contact with another object. These be things like plasticizers from PVC, sulfur compounds and rubber. There's also, you know, staining materials from unsealed wood, old foam, paper clips on paper, tape or other types of adhesives on objects, or even all the fats on your little fingertips there coming into contact with an object. Various pollutants will affect various types of objects in various ways, but they mostly cause discoloration or staining. Intrinsic pollutants are pollutants that come from the object itself. This means, for example, maybe 
maybe you have a leather book that has a copper or brass inlay on the front or some sort of design on it. Think of something like the book from The NeverEnding Story. The materials that are used in tanning leather can be quite acidic, so it will kind of kickstart the process of metal corrosion on the book decoration. We can also think of the same sort of process with some inks, like iron gall ink on paper. There are also things like secondary intrinsic pollutants that fall into this pollutant category. These are pollutants that are formed in objects during degradation. An example of this that we talked about earlier actually is acetic acid, which comes out of things like wood and cardboard if they get moist. Oh, what a terrible image. These types of acids can really speed up degradation being caused by other pollutants like oxygen and water vapor. So how do we protect ourselves from all of these pollutants? With airborne pollutants, you want to determine the lowest observed adverse effect dose, which essentially means keeping the object in an environment with these pollutants for a calculated amount of time before the pollutants start to have any negative effects on it. It's another reason why museum collections go on rotation, because storage environments are a lot easier to manage than a public museum space. And in storage, we can actually make properly regulated and monitored microenvironments that can better preserve an object. The key thing to keep in mind is which materials are most vulnerable to each pollutant and then just plan accordingly. Keeping things inside is already a really good start in mitigating airborne pollutants, so even if your storage area isn't ideal, it's still better than nothing. For contact pollutants, it's pretty straightforward. Avoid contact with potentially harmful materials and just make sure that you're using the correct glues and adhesives in accordance to what you're treating. Use acid-free paper in between your objects and use products that won't produce secondary pollutants like glass. Intrinsic pollutants are tricky because a lot of them are caused by the manufacturer or materials used by the artist, so there's not much that you can do. There are methods such as deacidification of books, which do help, but the main thing is to keep objects cool and dry so as to not speed up the degradation process. So there you have it, friends, the complicated agent of deterioration, pollutants. There are a lot more pollutants that I didn't speak about, so if you want to learn more, I have put a resource in the description below for you. So go ahead and click that if you want to learn more about all of the different types of pollutants and their direct effects on objects. If you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next agent of deterioration that's going to be live in the next three days. We're going to be talking about incorrect temperature. Big thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon for helping me live the dream by wearing a trench coat and yelling at my camera. Here are all of my socials and I'll see you next time. Stay dirty, my friends.